Michigan, and you can see God's handiwork, his order. So all of creation has his signature, his insignia upon it, and upon all of creation is uh, epitaph called order. And it's imperative that we understand so that we can operate lawfully, because if we're not in order, we will operate <coughs> unlawfully, which we'll get to in a second. So don't get tight over it. Uh, so we spent time, we went through some Old Testament pictures, stopped at first and foremost. We talked about how Moses built a structure in the earth that was conducive to what he saw in the heavens. He built it according to the pattern. God rewarded him and gave him a glory, a measure of himself, a presence that he has to offer to him. Amen? So we know that uh, as we look at that picture and some other places in the scriptures, as we move along tonight, as we observe this pattern, we find out the brazen altar itself had an order, the wood, and all the sacrifices had a, a particular order. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Then we stopped over and looked at the golden candlestick and found out that that oil had to go through a process. Remember? Mm -hmm. Go to Exodus. I bet you y'all might be at home talking about, can you pick me up today? <laughs> Exodus 20. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Exodus 27 and 20. Real quick. And it says, uh, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring the pure oil, olive beaten for the light, to cause the lamp to burn always. Right? <clears throat> in the tabernacle of the congregation. So it talks about how this oil had to go through a process. Right? Everybody, amen? Okay, in the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall order it from evening to morning before the Lord. You got to understand that the tabernacle of Moses, they had three, in, in the holy place, they had three, what, furnishing, three instruments. I hate to use instruments. Furniture, furnishing is the best word for it. Amen? And they had three of them. To the left was what? Candlestick. To the right was what? Table of showbread. Right in front of, if you were walking into the tabernacle of Moses, you would run smack in front of what? Altar incense. The altar incense. So you needed to be able to operate in that dimension. You need a pure oil. Mm -hmm. And all those furnishings is prophetic and got time tonight. Table of showbread is important. How many know that? We're going to talk about that in a second anyway. Amen. The tabernacle of uh, Moses was actually a prophetic picture of our progression in, 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 our, in the kingdom. Y'all don't know this, but let me just put it out there. The, the, altar, the altar of incense was for prayer, worship, right? Y'all remember that? Yeah. Prayer, pray, pray. Mm -hmm. intercession, worship, mm -hmm. and praise. So it had four dynamics to the altar incense. And on the left, you had the the candlestick, and we, we talked about how the candlestick last week, how it was uh, actually, uh, it had seven arms, branches, and on each branch they had three sets. You totaled up the sets, it came to 22 sets. Total up all the pieces you got, because 22 times three is 66, so we talked about 22 being the number of light, 66 being the compilation of the scriptures. From Genesis to Revelation, we have 66 books. So it lets us know that there is a pure light that comes out of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Can I get the thumbs up? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So there's an order, even as it relates to the understanding of the revelation that God wants to give us through the candlestick. That's why he told him in the book of Revelation, I'm going to come and take your light. Remember he told him, come get your stick. He didn't say it like that. He said, I'm going to come get your candlestick. So they're going to come and get their candlestick. In other words, they weren't going to be able to perceive him. So we need a pure light. And we said that the Ecclesiastes talks about when the light is impure, then you have the flies, mm -hmm. which is a significant symbolism because it's fly, flies reflect dead things. And that's why the Sanhedrin called Jesus Beelzebub, the Lord of Flies, which is a whole other thing I can talk about with Beelzebub, but it's irrelevant for this teaching. It just suffices me to tell you that God is looking for us to have a pure light. And Rudy brought up some, Elder Rudy mentioned something about the 25, in Matthew 25, when he had the five foolish and the five mm -hmm, uh, the virgins. Uh, virgins. You had the foolish and the wise. 
and they, the wives brought their own. So that's a whole other teacher. But the, what I'm suggesting tonight is that the, the connotation for order is important. So we can even see it in the, what Moses built. Mm -hmm. We're going to look through Scripture and find out that God, even though it ain't the same furnishing, the principle lies true throughout the Scriptures. So when you look at the table of showbread, anybody remember the table of showbread? Mm -hmm. This table was important. This table that the priests were able to eat and consume. So there was a table in the holy place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. In Exodus uh, 40 and 4, it says that thou shalt bring in the table and set it in the order that the things that are set to, to be set in order upon it, and thou shalt bring it in the candlestick and the light thereon. So even there's an order that the candlestick <coughs> is to have. Matter of fact, go to Leviticus 24. Let's go there. See, it's in more in detail. 24 and 5 and 6. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Oh, my. There you go. In fact. Hmm. Oh, let's go to one. It's connected. This is even further clarification on the lamb. The candlestick. Verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil, beaten for the light to cause the lamps to burn continually. See, I like that. To burn sometimes. <laughs> to burn continually. I like it because the implication is Moses, you're not responsible for the light. Okay, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. verse, verse 3. He told, he commanded the children of Israel, not the priests, not the ironic priesthood. He said, you make sure that your light Make sure your oil is pure mm -hmm. when you bring it as a corporate body so that we can instill it or install it into the candlestick. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I want to be pure. Verse 3, without the veil of testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation shall air and order it from evening until morning before the Lord continually. It should be a statue forever in your generation. He shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the Lord sometime. Continue. And thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof. Two tenths still should be in one cake, and thou shalt set them in what? Two rows. Six on a row. Upon what? The pure table before the Lord. And thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial and an offering made by fire. And you connect it with Exodus, uh, Exodus 40, verse 4 and 23, you'll find out this is the order that was commanded for them to bring two rows of bread called the table of showbread made out of flat fine flour and frankincense. And I'm not going to bore you because this is kind of a seminal message. But anyhow, it had two rows, six high. But it had to be done in order. Theologians call it the bread of his face. Hmm. So that table of showbread is the bread of his face or the bread of his presence. So there's an order. They, they, had to, they had to stack it in two rows. They couldn't have it in four, four rows. It had to be two rows. It had to be according to what was given to Moses. Amen? And we can talk about that rows. We can talk about those two lows. Or two, well, two, two, two rows. Not two loaves, but two rows, but that's a whole other message. So even in the golden, even in the table of showbread, they had to be stacked in two rows, six row, six per row. Two rows by six. Right? And it's called often the bread of arrangement, the bread of order, the bread of his face. So we even see as it relates to the table of showbread which table we have right now. Mm -hmm. Now this table is not just for one nation. That's why it was two rows. It was both for a Jew and Gentile. And the priests had to eat those breads before the Sabbath was over. They had a priest too. What does that mean? That doesn't mean a lot, but I'm going to tell you about it. But <laughs> Amen. So we need to be able to be able to understand that even to be able to approach his, his presence, to be in his face, 
course, in the New Testament, we don't have to worry about a physical furnishing. And Jesus has given us an opportunity to be in his face because he is the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah, I am the bread of life, right? So we don't have to come to a table no more. We don't need a veil between us and his presence or between us and his face. Come on, y'all. Y'all work, y'all work, y'all. Y'all real hard tonight. Okay? Let me hurry up then. So these, that's just, I'm just going to leave the rest alone because we can't stomach it right now. There's a whole bunch. When you look at the tabernacle of Moses, you'll find out order is a theme through it. Even in David's structure. Even when David got ready to do something. But let's look at David. Let's go over to 1 Chronicles 28 and 12. 28 and 11. The order is important. Creation has order. The tabernacle. That's a good picture right there. Mmm, they get me hungry. That was holy bread, matter of fact. Mm -hmm. That was a holy bread. And it'll, it'll, it'll really be a great advantage for you if you if you like to study and you like you you're into uh, imagery and things of that sort, and you can see Christ in everything because it, it, you know the six and man and all that other stuff. So there's a lot of different ways you can slice it, like souffle. For the sake of time, I, wanna, I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want you guys to, to, to zone out on me. Uh, David pattern. Let's look at David pattern because he had a pattern. He couldn't build it. He had a thought. Couldn't build it. Why David couldn't build the temple? He had blood on his hands. He was a fighter. You can't build in war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you married and you're trying to keep your marriage together. Can't build in war. Mm -mm. Can't build in war. Presence will never be honored in shed blood. There's only one blood that was shed. Can't be cutthroat. Can't be at odds. The enemy knows what he's doing. He said, You'll never build. You'll be distracted. You only can build in peace. 